Taurus, what's up, my beautiful Earth babes? How's it going? Welcome to your September monthly tarot reading. The majority of this reading will be career and finances at the very tail end. I will throw in some messages about romance and love, potentially with your Aquarius friends. No, uh, romance and love messages, relationship messages, things of that sort, if you're interested, will be at the end. I'll try to remember to timestamp it below if you want to hop directly to love, but... Uh, the monthlies I try and do a lot on career and finances, especially now. I know people are looking for advice, wisdom, guidance, so I will do my best. Uh, we'll see what we can get for the Tauruses out there. Um, my general spiel, here on YouTube I do general messages. Not everything I say will resonate with every single one of you out there. Please don't be offended if it's not your message. Um, as always, it's, it's a good idea to come into these readings with an open heart, with an open mind. Uh, tarot illuminates us to things that already exist within us, within our subconscious. We just bring it up to the surface, right? So. Not everything will resonate, but uh, give yourself the luxury of time to kind of digest and understand the messages because it could be in a few days, in a few weeks, something here will make sense to you and bam, that's that's my goal. That would be fantastic. So give these messages time to resonate. That being said, if, if the messages that come through here today feel strange or foreign, if they don't at all apply to your situation, push it aside. Don't take action on that, right? That's common sense. Use your intuition, use your discernment, your good judgment. Um, yeah, take away messages that inspire you, that empower you, that confirm something you're thinking or feeling. That's my spiel, guys. All right, everything else is written down below for you in the box, including my social media, how to contact me for a personal, etc., etc. Taurus, let's do it. Career and finances, a couple more cards and we'll get started. Hope you guys are well. Happy Virgo season. We are in earth energy, which is your natural element. So hope you're feeling good. It's a good time to focus on work. Good time to focus on our health, our bodies. Virgo season. Live to serve. All right, let's do it. Yeah, there's your Aquarius again. Uh, we'll, we'll see if that comes through. It, it may or may not be an Aquarius. Also potentially something with a Gemini. Uh, or a close collaborator, a key collaborator, especially those who work with, with their husband, with their wife, with their romantic partner, or that could potentially be, so to say, in the cards uh, in, in the future if it's not currently. Uh, working with animals for a lot of you, uh, working, uh, it could be agriculture or farmland or something like that, but for, for a lot of you, something about an animal is important. You may have just gotten a dog or a cat or something like that. I'm not sure why it's coming up in your career and finances, uh, but for those who are certainly working in a field that involves animals or therapy or something of the sort, maybe you're a vet, that, that's coming up here as um, lucrative uh, or something at minimum that, that your heart is really into, you are passionate about that. So if you're not currently pursuing it, universe is sort of saying, yeah, go in that direction. There's something in there for you. Yeah, helping animals, it could be uh, working at an animal shelter or doing something I almost like, I, I don't know, this sounds funny when I say it, but it'll make sense to someone like animals with disabilities or like, I, that sounds so sad. It's like making my heart hurt. But like if they, if they're like missing a limb or something, you, maybe you just rescued an animal like that. I don't know. Again, it's coming up. It was divinely guided. It was faded. And then, and also working with children. Okay. Um, so there's the magic child what's that about the child who has a hold on i'm trying i'm trying to grasp what this message is saying here all right it, all right so this could be honoring your inner child i mean that message comes up quite a bit and i don't mean to dismiss that but i'm trying to get the, the crux of this is there someone in a singing group or if you sung as a child getting in touch with that group or a group of people a, a choral group a, a i don't know a rock and roll group a poetry group so, okay there's a lot of messages coming through here. Some of you are, what does this have to do with career and finance? I'm trying to get there, guys. Just give, give me a second. Give me the luxury of time to get to the actual message here. Something about speaking uh, your vulnerabilities out loud to a group of people. It feels sort of like an AA group or a group where people come to heal as a collective to send good energy out to, to the world. I, I don't know what that is. But it has to do with getting in touch with uh, something that hurt you as a child or an inner vulnerability. Something about the collective joint group effort to heal each other's wounds. Something about that serving the group, serving a larger purpose. Very Aquarian energy, absolutely, like the humanitarian aspect. A piece of that is going to be translated into the work you are currently doing or work you're going to do in the future. Particularly, okay, working with children and potentially using animal therapy. 
Um, yeah, as and they do that, right? You know, in hospitals, they'll bring in dogs and this and that. And something about those two may or may not merge children and animals. Um, but And I mean, that could mean a bajillion different things. Maybe you're writing a storybook. Maybe you're writing a song about that. You know, whatever. Those messages are coming through with wish fulfillment attached to it. So if that's something you're thinking about or desiring or hoping to manifest, keep doing it because it's actually very strong cards. Usually the five of wands is about competition and conflict or inner turmoil, like um, inner unrest. Here it's actually a very beautiful depiction of taking one for the team or getting involved in a group activity where there's mutual efforts being put forward. And because wands can, can have to do with a, a spirituality, that's what I'm getting. It's like a little spiritual coven. It's like a little spiritual group. And I don't know how, how much you want to dig into that. It could just be, you know, getting together with your old college buddies, right? But in a sense, there's something healing. There's something very nurturing to your soul to be involved in that group. And maybe you're leading the charge on some sort of group activity or group work, again, to go out and make a change in society, to go out and make a difference, you know? No matter how big or small partnership is coming up, you could be a school teacher, again, with this whole thing of children coming up, or working with families. It could be working uh, uh, with children who come out of like domestic abuse situation or finding a safe home for for children or, or even animals. There's such a like, I'm gonna nurture and protect you because that's what you don't have in your life. Maybe you serve that role in a group of friends of yours, right? Maybe you are the motherly one or maybe you experienced some sort of plight as a child or grew up in an unstable home. It's, you're not only righting the wrong of your past and I, I don't say wrong as in it was your fault, but you are, uh, yeah, clearing up the baggage about that and doing something very positive and you know, making a positive out of a negative. All right, I know you guys are here for career and finances, but that actually was very significant. So for some of you, I hope that makes sense. But I do understand that was very specific. So let's try and do a little bit more broad. So some of you are waiting to hear back from a job interview uh, and you had trouble sensing the vibe of the room or of the interview, if you did a Skype call, whatever, especially if you saw this person's face or the demeanor, the one interviewing you. It's almost like you couldn't quite pin down what they were thinking or feeling, or they may have been giving you mixed messages where they acted very interested, but then they drew back a little bit. So let's let's clarify that. For my Tauruses who had a job interview recently or are waiting to hear from, my, my inclination says that you will hear back, but let's see what the cards say. Yeah, okay. Yes, you will hear back. Knight of Swords. Um, now, positive or negative? Tell me a little bit more about this. Something about a shoe company or like Nikes or Adidas or athletic wear, clothing wear, something with fashion, particularly sneakers and shoes I'm getting. Yeah, very like sassy, trendy shoes, male or female, by the way. Yeah, there's a nice little coupling there. Again, anything fashion or clothing related, uh, particularly exercise gear, sweatpants, sweatsuits. Um, uh, what do you call those? Like track, track suits. That's so funny. I was just talking about that with someone. Yeah, the Two of Cups is a nice little match. It's a good little pair. You may be trying to start uh, start a startup uh, with one other person, Two of Cups, um, in which case you'll, you'll go into this business venture together. Uh, you guys are very, um, you're very sharp, your intellect, you're very witty, you're very um, critical, but I mean that in a positive way. You look at the details and the facts. There's, It's possible you're gonna be collaborating with an air sign, a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. There, yeah, there's good energy there, but it's a little bit delayed. With the hangman, it's not quite here yet. Frequently, this card, in uh, sometimes the word we associate with it is, um, as I just lost it, it was on the tip of my tongue, um, sacrifice. A it's a card of Neptune and kind of Piscean energy. So in in terms of there, there's something you have to let go of in order to gain more of, in order to move forward, Knight of Swords energy. The Knight of Swords moves forward very fast. Fastest knight in the deck, arguably so. It's It can sometimes be a little bit impulsive, but very driven, very determined, very hellbent to get to that fairy tale ending or however you want to say it. So in order to make room for a potential new opportunity or a bigger opportunity, um, an expansion of what what the, what the seed has already been started, something would need to be sacrificed. Um, maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's a steady paycheck, maybe it's um, the location in which you live, maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe you're remote right now and now they're calling you back and it's like, all right, well, do you want the job or not? You know what I mean? A lot of different scenarios here, but... <sighs> 
would you not uh, this has to do with the wife and child or the the husband and the child the family unit is there a job opportunity that would potentially put the family issues on the back burner or yeah there, there's there's again great worry from your end taurus about the welfare or the well-being of a child or a family dynamic so again, I, I don't mean to like overdose this with the element of cheesiness, but it, this is a very real message that I feel like I give to Taurus a lot. So there must be something to that. Not honoring your inner child and beyond that, it also has to do with overshadowing what it is that you truly want and yearn for and desire because something else has maybe a large price tag attached to it. It's Again, are you willing to sacrifice your moral ground, your values, your ethics when something good comes along, but, but there's a very strict, there's like a strict rule or a strict law about what's allowed or what isn't allowed or in the contract, there's no wiggle room for taking a vacation or do you know what I mean? So I'm not saying you should or should not. That's not what I'm getting at, but that's what I mean. What's holding you back is this contemplation of, I don't know how I feel about that. For a lot of you, it has to do with the fine print of a contract or some sort of detail about this business opportunity. Here's what I think. For a lot of you, it has to do with being away from the family, not forever, but it may be a necessary business trip, but maybe it comes at a time that is very inconvenient regard, or inconvenient, sorry, regarding a childcare issue or it's, it's like you're caught between a rock and a hard place, that expression. It's like, I really want to move forward on this. It's a great opportunity, but I can't be an irresponsible adult. Or, or the opposite. Maybe you're taking care of a parent who is sick or elderly or has trouble getting around. There's something pulling at your heartstrings. But ultimately, as I'm saying, there is an essentially, and this is just kind of the definition of the card, a need to sacrifice something in order to gain more. Uh, you know, after the card number 12, um, Hangman is death, right? Card number 13, it's a Scorpio card. Death indicates the ending of a cycle. It doesn't mean ending of a life, right? It, it necessarily. It, it's essentially saying like, what can we let go of? What can we release? What is no longer needed on your spiritual journey, on your emotional journey, on your career and financial journey through life, right? Whatever it is. <clears throat> There's an ending or a release of something, at least at least temporary, temporarily, if not long term. Some of you may be in a, you may already be married or in a very significant relationship, but you're also sort of starting to catch feelings for your uh, uh, business partner. And so that's kind of, here's the thing though, even if that's the case, I'm sort of sensing loyalty to who you're already with and you're kind of like, oh, like how did I get myself into this? This is a little bit awkward. Like sort of like, what was I thinking? It's almost like you're beating yourself up on, I don't know if you've actually pursued someone else romantically. Again, this is if you're already with someone or maybe it's just you're just trying to be very professional in your work environment and you kind of catch yourself again, like flirting or doing something it's two of cups. It's early on. This, this doesn't feel like you have slept with anyone or anything like that, but you kind of catch yourself doing that. And again, there's this feeling of, wait a minute, like, what am I doing? This is not who, this is not who I am. And again, there may or may not be a child involved here. So here's the thing, Taurus. It feels like if you are married or with someone, they, their finances are looking very good or very solid. And so possibly by default, you may benefit from that if you're with someone who, who has, yeah, something about a good investment deal coming in or a good project in the works where, where there could be uh, something lucrative there. Um, yeah, things are starting to bloom and blossom around the Queen of Pentacles, potentially a Capricorn, though it doesn't have to be. Most my Tauruses, it seems like you're waiting to hear back from a job opportunity or from a partner that maybe you proposed like, let's go into business together, let's do this, let's do that. They're thinking it through, but I think they're going to be like, yeah, let's do it. Absolutely. Like, let's go after this. Like, cheers to us. Here's the start of a beautiful adventure. That's sort of what I get with who, whomever or whatever you're waiting on. I think there's positive results there. So that's sort of one message. Let's, let's dive into this one. So you got a couple queens. That's what I mean, especially for those interested in female partnership, whether you're male or female. This Yes, this is career and financial readings. I'm just saying there may be two potential female suitors again whatever gender you are that's that's not the issue here 
there's there's and so okay if it's not romantic suitors it's financial suitors yeah if you you know you've you've been contacted by headhunters or a recruiter or something in, in, in a positive way you may have two females interested in you whether you are male or female understood particularly earth and water i got a, a queen of pentacles and a queen of cups both are excellent money cards uh, in my opinion uh queen of pentacles earthly tangible things um you know the house the car the this the that the bank account queen of cups can talk about the the money flow right how how full up is your cup how full up is your bank account and where is where is their money stopped up where are the untapped avenues of income that you could be exploring again parent child dynamics a lot of teachers out there are professors or working with children um <laughs> it's so random some of you got a piece of advice it could be from your own child or i don't know what it is a child said something to you that you may have brushed off and just thought nothing of it but something about their words stuck with you and now you're really thinking about it you're thinking about walking away from some something that for the longest time you were very attached to you were very tied to sorry guys throat is dry. Give me a second. <laughs> you have a little wise child. They're like a, they're like a, almost like a guardian angel disguised as a child. I don't think it's like literally that, but there's something about some very wise words. It doesn't have to be a child, but it's someone I would say 20 years younger than you. Like there's a significant age gap and you're like, huh, they kind of have a point. They're offering you, I don't know if it's sympathy or compassion, especially it could be your own child too. If they're seeing you come home from work every day, just exhausted and have nothing to do. It's, it could be even a gesture, like they make you dinner or something. And you're just like, oh my God, this child is amazing. Like, yeah, there's, there's such a connection, a, a, a connection to this child. Is it your child? I, I don't, I don't know who that is, but <clears throat> Could just be a stranger you meet on the street where you drop, you you know, you drop your $20 bill and they notice and they tap you on the shoulder to give it back. And you're just like, God bless you. What a sweetheart you are. Something very important about an interaction with a child. I don't know what it is, but it makes you reflect on something very deep. It's something that you can't get off your head. And so I guess my advice or guidance to you would be like, remember the space you were in when that interaction happened. Remember who you were with or what you were thinking about. There's something more to be discovered there. <clears throat> something about envy or jealousy um so it could be that something about this child you look back in your own youth and, and it like reminds you of a younger version of yourself you may have felt like you you get you gave up on a dream or some sort of wish you had as a child which by the way it's coming back <laughs> sneak preview you have the star coming up but yeah there might be something there where I don't think it's being manifested in a nasty way of like rage, jealousy. It's not, it's not your low vibe and Scorpio energy, but there, there is something here about longing to have what that person has or what you had when you were younger. It's like a generational thing. You look back and I do want to say like regret or, or miss something or someone. Maybe you're missing a parent. Maybe you're reflecting on your childhood. But you're you're gonna end up taking a uh, I like I think it's a major risk, but you're gonna end up going for it, and it's gonna be worth it. Again, the idea of sacrifice, leaving behind something that is very comfortable. It's brought you stable income. It's been good to you over the years, but it shows such a big leap of faith in a beautiful way that you're not willing to settle and just be like, well, that's my life and that's that. It's like this is good and I appreciate it, and you know God is good and all that, whatever you believe in. But I think there's something else I could do. I, I think there's something else I want to take part in. I think I could push this a little further. Really, I think I could push myself a little further. And you do. Eight of Cups is, um, it, it's sort of an ending, but it's going after your Nine of Cups, which as we said, there it is. You're going after some major wish. And again, something about a group of children or some... I'm trying to understand the greater metaphor. If you if you don't work in an environment with children or with animals, there's something about the child that is very, very significant. I mean, look. All these cards. 
longing for your youth, for your child, for your lost, for the lost child that used to be, I don't know, I'm going to quit with the metaphors, but I mean, it's valid. It's, it's coming through here over and over and over again. So that's something for you to figure out, Taurus. I don't think I'm doing it justice for you here, but whatever, you, again, as I was saying, a generational, a look back on when I was younger, this is what I have now, this is what I want. I'm looking at children now, thinking about this and that. This is like maiden mother crone. This is the generational influence. Daughter, mother, grandmother, right? Whether you're male or female, there's something very important here. Potentially, you're going to end up working with a group of women. Maybe you're going to end up selling a product that is catered to women. Very much divine feminine energy here. It is also the card of Leo. It's the card of rebirth, of creativity, of joy, of happiness, of honoring your inner child. Dancing, too. Look at that. Dancing in a field full of flowers. So dance music something with the body again physical activity um <clears throat> like a active wear i guess is what it's called you know for yoga for jogging for i don't know skateboarding whatever that is again sneakers so that keeps coming back something very specific about sneakers anyway maybe you're marketing a sneaker to i don't know women I, I, whatever i don't know what it is but whatever it is it brings you a lot of happiness and as we were saying there's a need for sacrifice and then the death card well, the death can represent an ending of a chapter or a cycle in your life, but then something grows, something blossoms when you decide to close out a cycle and let, I think this is what it is. I think it's needing to let go of a mindset that you have. With this coming up, you're really struggling to do something because either you don't want to hurt someone's feelings or you're trying to like take one for the team. You're trying to sacrifice something in your own life to make your spouse happy, to make your partner happy, to make your child happy. But that's what I mean. I know this is very specific, but again, it doesn't have to be if you put it in the context of your own life. This feels like you have a kick-ass opportunity with a former college buddy to go into that Nike shoe business competitor thing you've always wanted to do. The timing is right, the money is there, but you're like, but I can't leave my wife and kid to go on a two month tour around the country to try and get whatever, promoters, marketing, blah, 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 blah. Then a lot of you, if any of that makes sense, have this moment where your kid's like, but mom, but dad, I want you to be happy. I love your sneaker idea. I think that's so cool. And that's what I mean. It's like, you know what we're like, this child is smart. Here's the thing. I think you end up doing exactly that but it doesn't come without you feeling support from those around you that it's almost like you're anticipating their disapproval when it's actually the complete opposite, Taurus. That in a nutshell is what I'm getting here. Now, where's the pentacles? <clears throat> this I was sort of thinking was a partner or a spouse or a family member. It could be you. In which case though, if you're the queen of pentacles, money is good. This is a good money card. If this is not you, this to me is saying, if it has to do with a spouse or a child or a parent, something about them is taken care of here. They're the queen of pentacles. So in terms of, can they support themselves for a couple days, a couple weeks, a couple months while you're off? It's almost like you view it as going off to do some sort of selfish or childlike activity, but it's really not if you're trying to grow your business. I mean, I know this, this can be a touchy subject, and again, you have to use your intuition, but it's like, or, I'm just going to say it, okay? So this is, this is kind of an intense message, so take it if you like, toss it out if you don't want. Are you sacrificing your entire life for your child? Right? And I, I understand, right? There, there are certain things you can and cannot do. Although, is that true? Is that really true? This is important. Instead of finding reasons why you can't, think of all the reasons why you should and how it could help your child. If I go off and do my thing and I make a bunch of money, well, that child can, can afford to go to college or this or that. It's like, I think you're looking at, again, from the sacrificial perspective of, oh no, my life is dedicated to this. And I'm always getting like nun vibes. Like I've taken an oath. I've sworn that this is my, but you have something, look at this card, right? The generations, by going off and doing something that's scary and to you in your perception feels like you're turning your back on those you love. I don't think universe sees it like that. I think universe sees yourself as giving yourself a gift to go after that thing that you've always wanted to go after, but there were things holding you back. 
when you go off and do this thing, pursue the degree, pursue the whatever it is, how many people benefit from that joy, from that happiness, from that growth, from that income? Multiple people. It's not just you. Your child is there, whoever this is, right? The long lasting impact or benefit of whatever this thing is that you're kind of like, do I or don't I? My gut reaction says do. Go for it. I think it will be worth it. And I'm, I'm sure it's not as simple as that's okay, I will. Or you would have done it already. I get that there's very complicated factors here. I understand that, Taurus. But you're looking for advice or guidance. I think you need to start coming up with reasons why you should and focus less on why you shouldn't. Just make a list. Make a pros and cons list. Start small, right? Doesn't that mean you have to act on it? But there's someone who is encouraging you to do this. Maybe this has to do with feeling like there's disapproval from a family member, but you also have someone counteracting that saying, do it. Yes, this sounds like a good idea. Potentially a friend or again, an air sign, a tour. Um, I did say Taurus. Um, it could be that, but I was going to say Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. All right. For those who do not resonate with that, let's see if I can get anything else. Does anybody want to open a bar, open their own restaurant, open their own catering service? Queen of Wands. Yeah, that's very positive. There's positive. Uh, I, I don't know if now is the climate to do that, but, you know, save your pennies for a rainy day because eventually that shit is going to open back up. So start planning. Be strategic about it. Uh, the, the, the um, uh, what is that word? Uh, the graphic design the architectural drawings the blueprints of it you should start working on that or fine-tuning it i think a lot of if that makes sense to some of you a lot of you have already started that some of you need to invest in better computer programs or uh or get get the degree that would help you to do that yeah some of you want to be architects or plan plan houses plan businesses plan yeah i'm getting like blueprints sort of uh, some of you need to cut back on the substance abuse, whether you're smoking a lot of weed or a lot of something else, universe is like, cut it. Some of you are drinking too much, you're overindulging in alcohol, and it's it's lowering your vibe. Yeah, some of you are, are yeah, going hard on that stuff. Yeah, you, ha you, <laughs> these three cards, Knight of Cups, the Three of Cups, and this card temperance specifically let me show you in the upright in reverse universe is like universe is trying to give you a little bitch slap here literally like taurus what what are you doing what are you doing and i know some of you do not want to hear it right now but yeah this, this feels like they're reprimanding you like what what are you doing what are you doing what are you doing with your life kid clean up your act get it together snap out of it Hilarious. I did say none earlier, too. I wonder if that, I mean, nothing in tarot is, uh, <sighs> is for nothing. There's some, really? Do some of you want to be nuns? All right, cool. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> and I was like, but would I have to give up drinking? Because I really love to drink. You can drink wine, can't you? I don't know how that works. I'm not going to pretend to know what, that's, what that life is about, but sure. Yeah. All right, so then in Virgo season, there's going to be a Pisces that comes in and plays a particular key role. It could be just giving you advice or guidance. It could be lending you some money. It could be someone from the past who has a really good idea that they want you to get in on. It could also be a Virgo. But yeah, I think this is a timestamp. Something significant is going to happen at Christmas. I don't know if that's when you're going to launch a website or launch a business or make your first sale. The timestamp of Christmas is when you're going to see something come into fruition that you either start or work very persistently on in Virgo season. So Virgo season is now. Happy Virgo season. We're in it. Depending on when you watch this, of course. But um, yeah, a a a late August, mid to late September, that's, that's your Virgo season. So roughly, if you're not doing anything significant now, start because you may see very good reward from that endeavor come Christmas. Uh, more clients, more money, more, I don't know, networking, more people reaching out to you. Some of you may be asked to do an interview for a magazine or yeah, weigh in on something and it's either the spoken word you offer, you could be doing public speaking, you could be going on tours, giving speeches, or it may have to do with your written word as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm sort of getting like a, a, a being interviewed about something, about your business, about your product, about your whatever. 
website launching keeps coming up too. If, if you're thinking about starting a website and you haven't done it, get on it right now. Stop watching this video. Go build your website. <sighs> Kidding. Some of you are going to be like famous Instagrammers or famous bloggers or famous YouTubers, especially, um, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not at all an ageist reader. You can be any age and do that. But specifically, if you're in your mid to early or uh, mid to late twenties or so, you have a pulse on, on trends, trendiness of social media, things of that sort. And by all means, whatever age you are, if that's your message, take it and run with it. But yeah, there's someone there's someone who, who is not quite 30, You, there's gonna be a blow up for you on uh, Instagram and social media, things of that sort. Um, and it probably has to do with fashion wear, hats and sunglasses. Something about uh, animals, again, something about taking funny pictures of animals with like human clothing on, like top hats and I don't know, stogies. And I don't know what that is, but maybe you're, maybe that's on a poster that you advertise with something about, yeah. Clothing and fashion is very important in this spread for a lot of you. Some of you may be making t-shirts with, with your logo on them to spread the word about your business or something of that sort. <clears throat> some of you, okay, some of you are going to get a phone call from someone you either didn't anticipate to hear back from. It could be that interview that you thought you bombed or you couldn't quite get a reading on what they thought of you. You're going to hear back and you're going to be quite surprised, but it's pleasant. It's good news. Or for some of you, this has to do with hearing from a colleague or a friend from the past that you haven't heard from in ages, like 10 plus years. It comes out of the clear blue, especially a Pisces or a Virgo. They just call you up one day and I do think it's a phone call. I don't think it. Yeah, I don't think it's an email, though. I mean, I guess it could be. I'm not going to limit it, but you get communication from someone who you're very surprised to hear from them. But it's been a while. And something about the color pink is important. Pink or rose. I don't, that could be someone's name, I suppose. Or that could be, I don't know, the uh, the product you're selling or the, I don't know, pink. The color pink or whatever that means to you. That's, that's significant in that whole communication. All right. So then we got the Queen of Pentacles again. Yeah. Okay. For those who are married, husband, wife, whatever, long-term partner, this thing that you're holding back on that you know your heart is telling you to do it but you feel otherwise committed or held back again to sacrifice something to take care of the family or whatever it is your person is eventually going to encourage you to go after it and it might not even be your spouse it may for a lot of you it might actually be your mother who says listen if I were in your shoes, I would do it. And and for a lot of you, your mother has been in your shoes. Your mother may have a regret about not going after something that she always wanted or desired. And that might be news to you. That might be a story you've never heard before, but she's going to be like, listen, you got one life to live, kid. It's like a scene out of a movie, right? You guys can picture it. They pass on this pearl of wisdom or pearls of wisdom, this little gem they share with you. And they're like, if you don't do this, you will spend the rest of your life regretting it. So fucking chase that North Star. Go for it. Again, don't find excuses why you can't. Find find ways to trailblaze through the obstacles, right? You're feeling Saturn's influence, you know, the planet of restriction, of enforcement. Aquarius don't hear that, right? The star, it, yeah, the little rebel, the little rebel. You're going to go after it. And... Or, I mean, you will or you won't. It's up to you. But if your wish fulfillment is in it, which is one of the first cards that came out, this is about going for it. Finding your lover, finding the love of your life, but also finding the job you love. Finding a career that you're passionate about. And in a sense, it's like by doing what you love, you're putting love out into the world. Wouldn't the world be a better place if we were all doing what we love? Is that idealistic? Sure, but why not? Why the hell not? YOLO, right? The star, aligning with your North Star. This is saying to me, Five of Pentacles, it, it's sometimes a card of hardship. It's sometimes a card of uh, things not being quite in place. It's sometimes a card of, yeah, like uh, tough financial times or um, illness. It can be a lot of different things. <clears throat> Things have a way of working out, even if you're knee deep in shit, right? That is not the story that you have to take on as your own for the rest of your life here on earth. You can flip the switch. You can change the story. You can pick your own ending. That's a perfect like summary of this. Just because you spent 30 years of your life going in this direction doesn't mean you can't course correct and decide to go in that one. It's entirely up to you. Um, you know, a tarot reader can tell it to you, your mother can tell it to you, your child, who probably will, 
can tell it to you, but until you believe it yourself, you're going to be stuck in this limbo state for a long time. So, and I don't mean to end it on a, a sober note. It, it seems like there's a lot of cards here that would work in your favor, but in, in a sense, again, tough love, right? You're the one who's holding yourself back. You're anticipating consequences or again, hardship. They're not even here yet. So why are you worried about it? Anyway, Taurus, I feel like I got really serious at the end of that one, but you actually have a kick-ass reading. You have very strong cards. Let's transition into your love life. Taurus, Taurus, Golden Girls, Daryl. Let's lighten it up. Look how cute this card is. Is this you? Is that you as a kid? I feel like that could be male or female, right? Who's the jackass? Taurus, Taurus. I'm kidding. You guys know I love you. All right. Let's do it. Taurus's love life. Oh no, we got reversals. Son of a, oh no, it's just the one. Okay. I will read reversals, but it is not my preference. Because in theory, you can get the same messages upright. It just depends what they're clarified with, right? You know, you know what I mean, Taurus? You know what I mean? All right. Three of cups. Boom. Reunions, reconciliations, social gatherings, networking, team, group dynamics. Ooh, and within that group dynamics is the soulmate. Who's the one that you took dancing or the one you want to go dancing with? Who's the one that you went to Hawaii with? Who likes cheesecake? Everybody raise their hand. If you don't like cheesecake, we have bigger issues than your love life. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm being sassy, Taurus. All right. So very good potential with a water sign is Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. Some of you will actually be celebrating a anniversary, a milestone anniversary with your sweetheart, male or female, or whatever, non-gender binary, right? I'm trying to be inclusive here. I probably didn't say that right, but gender is not, not an issue in tarot, right? We know that. Tell me about the Pisces. We want to focus on the Pisces here. The Pisces is in limbo, or you're in limbo about the Pisces. There will be forward movement, but it's going to be painfully slow. Um, positive cards, uh, you know, this is Pisces in their natural state, just lost in fantasy land, a little bit dreamy, a little bit head up in the stars, often mistaken as flaky. It's not that. They just kind of live on their own terms. Pisces is like in the zone here, but there will be forward progress made. It's just going to be very slow. Progress, though. Slow progress with the Pisces. I do, I do like that. Or it's saying, Earth sign, you haven't quite decided how you feel about the Pisces. So if that's the case, well, you're on your own. <laughs> uh, what is Spirit's advice or guidance for those who are uncertain about the Pisces? There's love there on their end. That's what I think. But yeah, you're not, you're not certain. So I mean, ultimately, you got to listen to your heart. If you're not feeling it, you know, you don't got to fake it. Don't got to fake it for them. More messages. Tell me about the Scorpio Cancer Pisces. For some of you, that's, I don't know why you would be watching this if that's the case, but for some of you, you're celebrating a milestone anniversary with the water sign. Tell me about the, the fire sign, if they're dating, if they're thinking about them, if they're flirting with them. Tell me about the water sign for Taurus. Two of Cups. Very cute. A cozy couple. Empress. Oh, that's you. All right. Uh, this person would treat you like an empress. They would treat you very well or, you know, male or female, doesn't matter. You are the empress card, even if you were male. Uh, they would treat you very well. They respect you. Um, they might actually be a little bit intimidated by you. Um, this may also have to do with an Aquarius, but I think this is saying you would be their wish. You would be their dream come true. They, you know, the wish upon a star type vibe. I think they do that for you, Taurus. So again, very, very likely a water sign. It could all, uh, Taurus, uh, sorry, very likely a water sign, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces regarding you, the Taurus, something about that may factor in about, a, uh, an Aquarius as well. It could be that someone has a choice to make between you and the Aquarius, or again, this might be you. You may have choices between an Aquarius and a water sign. You understand? Overall seems positive. Just be, be careful of any third party activity if you're not looking for that. So, ooh, someone's riding there. The motorcycles. All right, one more love message. New, new message for the lovers out there. Taurus's love life. Give me something, something juicy. Give me something good here. Something about a mermaid tattoo. Is somebody getting a tattoo of a mermaid or is that like a nickname? Somebody calls you the, the little mermaid or are you watching the little mermaid? Did you act in the little mermaid play? I don't know what that's about. Something about the little mermaid. What is the ace of pentacles? Okay. So, I mean, it's positive, but it's reversed. So was there a taking back of something? If the Little Mermaid, if that makes sense in your life regarding a relationship, there's a, a taking back 
is it someone, uh, are you seeking child custody? And the, the partner is like, nope, they're mine. I, I don't know what that is, but there's a, something that was given and then t taketh away. With the, I don't know what that is, the mermaid. Something about that is, is yeah. anyway. All right, so then we're having anxiety about the air sign, the Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, very likely a male air sign. Tell me about that. Mm. There's, yeah, there's every feelings. Everybody's feeling some type of way about it. For those who have parents that have passed or grandparents that have passed, if this was a spouse or someone you brought to family parties, it's almost like your ancestors up in heaven or up in the sky, whatever you believe in, they're wanting you to come to a peaceful agreement. I don't necessarily know if that means getting back together. You will know the answer to that. But it's saying, like, can we, can we come to a mutual understanding? Can we, instead of drawing a line in the sand, can we be amicable? That's, that's what, like, your, your relatives are hoping for because they don't want to see you like this. It's causing you a lot of pain. It's causing you a lot of discomfort. Sleepless nights. I think you think this person is kind of an asshole, to be honest. Again, it's not saying you need to go back with them. In fact, you probably shouldn't if they're making you feel this way. But essentially, it's like we, we got to figure this out so you're no longer holding on to the mental baggage. Uh, I'm saying peace offering, but I'm not saying you need to give anything other than... Uh, yeah, it just seems like you guys need to have a heart-to-heart -heart about, okay, especially if you have a shared child or a shared business or something, it's like, we have to make this work, so can we both just be, like, mature adults? That That's what it feels like, particularly with the male uh, air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. It could be a female as well. Strong Gemini vibes there, absolutely. In fact, all three cards are Gemini, so who are we dealing with? <laughs> For a lot of you, it's a Gemini. Mm. Let's switch decks, Yeah. Golden Girls. Ooh, yeah. Let's definitely switch decks as we get the tower. What should we do? Harley Spencer. Against my better judgment. Ooh, and we heard motorbikers, too. So that was a symbol for some of you. So a bunch of motorcyclists just went by. I went on a job interview once to be like a, I don't know what it was, like a secretary for a, a motorcycle company. And I accidentally called it motorbikes, and I'm pretty sure that's why they didn't hire me. The guy was like, they're not motorbikes, they're motorcycles. Darling. Sorry. Just thought I'd share that tidbit with you. <laughs> Look, it wanted to be seen. Fell right out. Motorcycles. Taking a road trip with a Capricorn? It, it would be a very peaceful trip. It would actually open your mind up. It would uh, it would be good therapy for you to go on like a mini road trip with someone, especially if you ride motorcycles or maybe you're thinking of purchasing one and with your Leo. Some of you are going on like a beach vacation with a Leo. I heard beach resort. Yeah, there's going to be a cozy coupling with a Leo and it's going to be passionate. It may also involve a Scorpio or a Gemini. Yeah, there's good vibes here. It, it feels a little bit wild child. Um, like it, it kind of feels like you don't know this person very well, but you just go on a road trip with them. So please use your best judgment, right? I'm not, don't do it because a tarot reader told you to, but yeah, I mean, if the vibes are there, you probably don't know this person very well, but I think you're going to go on a little vacation road trip with them and it, it's food for thought. I think you're going to learn something about this person that you probably didn't know before. And I think, I'll be honest, I think it gives you pause, but it also is fun. I'm going to leave it at that. Anyway, Taurus, that's what I got for you. Please, oh yeah, you may learn a lot about them. Eh, again, the Gemini. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you. Please do like, share, subscribe. Let me know in those comments down below what resonates. I will see you very soon for more tarot. Bye, Taurus.